Welcome to Agents of Screen, the first and only place to come to for movie reviews live at the cinema. And today we're here for the review of Top Boy Season 3. Spoiler free review of Top Boy Season 3. Now leading up to Season 3 there was a lot of rumours and scepticism about the show's return. Like oh is it going to be set in the US? Oh is Drake going to be involved? Oh he's going to put himself in the show? Oh it's going to pander to a wider audience? And most importantly is it going to maintain the authenticity and maintain the integrity of the show? Well I'm here to confirm it emphatically does and it is the best season of the series. But the season returns with Deshane in Jamaica having fled the UK and now he's living a civilian's life. Sully is in prison a few days from release but you have a new antagonist that is making himself a nuisance. And with Duchesne and Sully away, Driss is struggling to hold what's left together having suffered a stroke. And there's a new top boy in Summer House who has his own reasons to do everything possible to take over. Off the bat, I really enjoyed the series, but I would say my overwhelming favorite thing about this season is Kano. Fam? Fam. If you saw the Top Boy trailer reaction that I did, you would already know that I said that Kano's performance in season one and season two is one of the most underrated acting performances on TV in recent years. And I didn't think it was possible, but <laughs> He's, he's actually leveled up. Like he's moving like he's Goku. You know like in Dragon Ball Z you think, okay, he's got into Super Saiyan level three. There's, that's the ceiling of his strength. There's no way he could surpass that. But Goku goes Ultra Instinct. And that's what Kano is doing. He is moving on a different level. I'm gonna start the hashtag from now. From now, I'm gonna start the hashtag. It should be up here. BAFTA for Kano. I want to see at the next BAFTAs at a minimum I want to see a nomination for Kano's performance in Top Boy in season three, at a minimum. If he's not nominated, something's getting mash up. <laughs> something's getting mash up. A table is getting flipped, something's getting broken, something has to get mash up. But anyways, there is a lot of growth. The Sully that you see in season one and season two is not the Sully that you see in season three. He's changed, like prisons changed him. You see a more I want to say human side to him and I think that's helped massively by the increased number of episodes in this season there was four before each season now it's ten no word of a lie I literally had to keep rewinding certain scenes to like fully absorb the greatness that he was delivering like this sounds like I'm guessing exaggerating whatever I don't care it's the truth he really was that good for me anyway obviously before all this we know him as Kano the MC but he was so good I was fully engaged in his character I forgot Kano and I was just watching Sully and I think that's a, the biggest compliment I can pay to him as an actor I completely forgot about everything outside and I was fully immersed in his character but quickly as I said Duchesne's character started the season in Jamaica and it was really refreshing to hear authentic Jamaican accents finally especially after hearing the disgraceful Jamaican accent in Luke Cage season two. The less said, the better. And I really enjoyed, as I said, the increased number of episodes this season, which I think really allowed them to create more layers and depth to the show and allow them to explore several character arcs and storylines simultaneously that are all intertwined somehow and at no point did it ever feel like they were trying to do too much with it or it was, the story was too bogged down it was, it was they done it perfectly more screen time allowed the show to touch on even more things like gentrification immigration emancipation bare asians now nah, i'm joking <laughs> i'm joking but seriously gentrification immigration, young black men suffering from PTSD, failing to deal with grief, having a blinkered mentality and not being able to see anything outside of the ends and so much more. It also allowed them to give a different and often overlooked perspective and insight into what turns people to drugs and it's more of a systematic failure and an indictment of the environment that they're in as opposed to the people themselves. It's also a testament to the writing that at times you have a hard time deciding who you want to win. Speaking of who, there are lots of characters and actors that don't well. Michael Ward who played Jamie, Santan Dave who played an absolute madman in Modi, Bashi aka Ashley Thomas who plays Jermaine. I wonder if Bashi ever regrets that name. But anyways, even the young actors who played Anson Stefan done really well. And I really enjoyed how Little Sims' character Shelley was written in this show. 
she didn't make anyone son take her for idiot. But aside from Kano, my next favorite portrayal was Jack, who is played by an actress called Jasmine Jobson. First role I've ever seen her in, but she was outstanding. Every time she was on screen, she had real presence and gave real depth to the character. I'll be interested to see what she does next. And you could definitely tell that the budget for the season was upped. From the writing, to the directing, to the cinematography, to the music. And this is not a spoiler, but throughout the season I had a few favourite bits of dialogue, just pieces of line, no context, you won't know where it's from, who said it, etc, etc, but it's three. I was, I was going to do my favourite, but it's our channel, we can do what the fuck we want. My first favourite line is when someone says, what do you want, a fruit shoot or something? But my second favourite line, this is in no order by the way, but my second favourite line is when a certain person is on a train and someone says to him, excuse me, this is the quiet section and the other person replied well shut the fuck up then my third favorite line is when someone says is the juice worth the squeeze but any gripes i did have were very minor like for instance i wasn't particularly feeling the whole love interest storyline with jamie i thought that was a little bit leave it leave it yeah leave it yeah also, I found Duchesne's character to be not likeable at all, but that's not really a criticism of the show, that's, I just didn't like his character. As I said, it was 10 episodes long, but I personally felt that the first five episodes were stronger than the last five episodes. In other words, I felt like the season was strongest when it focused on the relationships as opposed to the back and forth drug wars. Overall though, I fully enjoyed the season. I would give it my stamp of approval and recommend that if you haven't seen, to watch that immediately. But listen man, I, I am so proud of these guys. Let's be clear, I've never met any of these guys before. I don't know any of them personally, but I'm, I'm so proud of them. But how would I score this? Um, using the A to F scale, including like plus and minuses like C plus, D minus, etc. I would score Top Boy Season 3, I would give it an A. But how did you find Top Boy? And how would you score it? And how it ended leaves the door open for a Season 4? Is that something that you would want to see? But that has been my review for Top Boy Season 3. As always, make sure you like, share and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing, bruv? But I've been your boy Miles, thank you for watching again, but from all of us at Agents of Screen, until the next video, peace.